Hey guys, it's Ruby here at the Harry Wood Gallery with Jesse Blake. It's at the new grad show and it's up until the 27th. We're by your piece over here. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, I just I started with a microphone a couple years ago and it got into a couple of shows, so I decided to make a couple more. And this is one that I worked on with one of my teachers, Mark Frohmeyer. He helped me uh, do the laser engraving on the computer and everything like that. So right now I'm just working on trying to get it into a, uh, into set it into a scene. So is it um, part of a larger body of work that you're doing then? Or is it like you just want it to be a part of something else? Uh, right now I'm working on a series. So it is, I have a couple, I have about six right now. So I'm trying to get a couple more though. Cool. And I noticed um, you did your undergraduate here. Uh, so what's it like being admitted as a grad? It's cool. I mean, I like all the faculty here, so, you know, I like Tom and the way he helps the students. Cool. Well, congratulations. Hey, guys. I'm here at Step Gallery with Julia Nahn. She teaches at ASU. Um, I can't say the name of the show, so I'm going to let Julie tell you. <laughs> uh, Rio Cancion, artwork by the children of the Rio Congregal watershed. And how long is the show up? Uh, it's up through the end of this week only, so definitely try to try to come out and see it. Tell us a little bit about the show, if you don't mind, okay. uh, how you got, how it came to be. Okay, great. So um, I had the great. Uh, privilege of receiving a grant from the Global Institute of Sustainability to collaborate with my brother, Blake Batten, who's currently working in Honduras uh, for Guaruma. Guaruma is uh, an environmental education organization that works through photography uh, to engender love of where these kids live, which is an incredible place. So um, we got a grant to, uh, for me to come down and do a workshops with about 80 kids over the course of a week. And um, also the grant uh, made this exhibition possible, paid for the, the materials for the work and um, output of the work. And also uh, allowed us to buy some equipment for Guaruma. So they're able to make videos and prints for the first time. And then finally, um, it allowed us to bring up a student from Honduras who's, who's here tonight. Uh, so it's been a, a really kind of amazing experience. A lot of the work in the exhibition, all of the digital work, um, represents the ongoing uh, work that the students are doing. So every day they go out in the jungle or in their neighborhood and they explore their, their world. Um, so that's present in the gallery. The other pieces are um, relate directly to the workshops that we did. So I did um, want to introduce Cyanotype because I thought it would be good to complement their digital work with something really hands-on because they're very like physical people, little kids. You know, they like jump <laughs> off of high places and they pick up snakes. Um, so we made things by hand and we wanted to, um, like you said, kind of think about that there was a female botanist artist in 1842, you know, and doing this. And um, so we worked really quickly on the paper one so they could just see what happens because it's really a strange idea. Um, it was hard to tell them to work quickly. Like, oh, it's sensitive to light. It's sensitive to light. You have to work quickly. That was a really foreign concept. Um, so we had to do some experiments. And then when they kind of got that down, then we worked on the cloth um, uh, to make uh, you know, a more involved kind of collages with text um, on transparency, also with objects. Um, and that became the collaborative quilt piece. Well, it's a very beautiful show. It's Thank awesome. You. Definitely come out and check it out. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, girl. <laughs>
and I took sequencing with Mike Lundgren, and I took, uh, before that, view camera with Mike Lundgren, and I just started shooting intuitively at that time, and this body is what grew out of it. Cool, so I also noticed that they're not really um, displayed in like a linear kind of way. Um, could you tell me a little bit about why you decided to display it the way you did? Yeah, um, I like the linear way too, but I felt like these pictures needed to be um, formed like this because they have relationships to each other that aren't linear. Like there are three in a row that have meaning down that way. So it's just kind of a way for you to guide the viewer. So and fit them all on the wall, because it probably would not fit, so. it's really interesting. Um, as someone who isn't a photography major, I was wondering, um, or a photographer, how do you decide, um, like, between doing these prints in, like, color or doing them in, like, black and white? Um, I have done black and white in the past, but I feel like uh, I'm talking about issues that are kind of in the 21st century, and they are directly, like, related to contemporary political issues and so I feel like color helps them. I think I wouldn't know how to do it in black and white is the easy answer. So, <laughs> Well thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I'm here at Gallery 100 with Josh Lozier at his BFA in photography show. Can you tell me a little bit about this group of photographs? I recognize some familiar faces. Definitely there's some ASU Right. faculty and TAs in here. Could you tell me a little bit about them? Sure. Uh, so I've been working on these photos in some way for about a year now. The oldest one is taken about a year ago next week. Um, and they're all, I mean, they're all portraits. Um, and I guess they're kind of a mix of like straight on direct portraits. And I think the more recent ones are starting to maybe go in a little different direction. And the, the mix of those two dynamics really interests me. Uh, and so I guess I'm sort of putting together to see how that works and I'm just really interested in people. Did you have a particular way of deciding of who you wanted to photograph for these? Um, to be honest, I really, this, to some people it is very interesting to me, uh, not always who you'd expect. Um, and some people just have a really interesting energy about them, a really interesting look, uh, all the above, something along those lines and that's usually what draws me to people. And um, so I just ask if I can photograph them, or sometimes I just photograph them in the moment, and that's what that's how I get my photos, I guess. So how did you um, make these prints? Are they digital? Or? They're, well, they're all from they're all from scan film, and so I, I scan them, and then uh, over time I just I edited them, and then I printed them out over an AS, you know, our digital lab in the art building, and um, I I had to buy the paper, of course, and um, and the and the ink, <laughs> as we know, and. Um, and I had to install them, and there they are. Okay. Well, so now that you have your BFA show under your belt, what are you going to do now? <laughs> well, I'm not going to Disneyland, but <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, um, I'm just going to keep working on my studies here, taking more pictures. I'm learning to use a view camera for the first time, and then I'll hopefully graduate in the spring and keep making pictures. So that's what I'm planning on. Well, congratulations, oh, and thank thanks you. so much.